Hey guys, what's up? It's I'm Fly Jake, and today we are in the world of Trenaris. It's Daisy Standalone Time, and we are here to tell you how to start off in Daisy Standalone. Now, I've made a video on this before, but so much has changed since that year, or two years ago even, that it's time to do it again. And uh, for all you Xbox players that are trying it for the first time, or anybody coming back to 1.0, here's a video for you. Um, and if you're pretty advanced in the game, a lot of this is going to be stuff you already know, but maybe you still find stuff you uh, could use to, you know, learn. Um, so we got a zombie right here that hasn't seen me yet, and I want to start off with this because you're going run to be running into a lot of these guys. Um, to deal with them, you always want to be the one that hits first. Because then you can keep momentum up, and they usually won't get a chance to hit you. So this is pretty important to always try and do. Uh, so far, he hasn't got a single hit on me. And look at that. Took him down, not a single hit, and we're good to go. We're healthy. Um, even probably built a little bit of muscle there fighting that guy. So we're going to go ahead and step over here and check this out. So always make sure you loot the infected too, because a lot of times they'll have food or ammo for you. Um, as you can see next to the name where it says infected, there's a little plus symbol. Um, and that means there is an item in here. And look at that, it's a Pepsi-Cola, so that's really, really good, because tip number two is to always stay hydrated. There's so many times in this game where you'll think you're, you know, doing fine on liquid, you go on a long run, um, liquid hydration, and then you'll find out you're pretty dang thirsty, and that thing turns yellow, and you can't find a dang water pump or any sort of water source, and you die of hydration. So you've got to make sure before you go on a long run that you're, you've got water in your system. Um, also, make sure you always loot uh, pants like this. Don't just skip over them. Always loot, you know, clothes on the ground and loot cars for sure. Um, as you can see, we're finding a CZ-61 Scorpion. That was using no skill except always checking these sort of buildings. These buildings here um, spawn police loot, so keep an eye out for these guys because they're pretty common, especially in the cities. I'm sure we'll see a few more in Electro. So another thing I want to say is you're spawning here on the coast, and you, you know, you have options. You can run down the coast there. A lot of people think, oh, Berezino's that way. Let me run there. Or, oh, Cherno's this way. Let me run here. Um, now, the best option for you is to prepare for your journey and to go inland. I, I'm always a preacher of going inland because if you're looking for the best loots, make sure you're always running inland. If you're running along the coast, you're just burning fuel only to loot another city with not that good a loot. The loot tiers seem to get better as you run, um, like I said, inland, sort of northwest area. Um, I always, you know, I like that. My favorite route is to go to Staroy. Maybe one day I'll make a video on my favorite loot route, um, but for now, that's just my tip there, is to make sure you don't just spend your whole time just running along the coast um, trying to get to the next city. Because if you do that, you're going to be really bored a lot, um, and it's just not the right way to go. All The best loot's inland. The best cities are inland. The higher tier guns are inland. Um, and all the military bases you know, are all inland besides the below to one, um, which is still quite a ways the other way. Another thing is you want to have some sort of item in your inventory for opening food, cutting rags, um, and just doing things with a blade. So you spawn on some servers with a stone knife like this, but if you didn't have this, you want to quickly find an item like a steak knife, because often you'll run out of rags pretty quick. If you get shot twice, it will take only, uh, it, it will take multiple rags to heal up the wound a lot of times, and sometimes you'll run out, and then the next time you get shot, you're, you're going to be scrambling as you bleed to try to, you know, bandage up, and you may not have any bandages, so then you're, you're bleeding all over, you're trying to find bandages, all these things matter. So make sure you have some sort of sharp item in your inventory. Again, guys, another thing, just like I said about the zombie, you can see next to this P coat, there's a plus symbol in the brackets. That means for 100% certainty, there is an item in here. And look at that, it's a sharp item. And I'm going to go ahead and keep just the steak knife because it's actually smaller, so it saves me a little bit of weight. Um, but that's, yeah, definitely good to know. Also, guys, you can see there's a weight difference between items. So your sprint is affected by the weight of what you're holding. So this hoodie uh, is, is under a kilogram, while this pea coat weighs three kilograms. So over time, the more weight you put on, it affects your sprint meter, as you can see in the bottom left. So you gotta, you know, you gotta weigh things. Do I want the 10 extra storage slots if it's gonna slow me down a little bit? You just have to make those kinds of decisions, so I figured I would inform you on that. Um, walk over here, hockey mask. I'm looking for some apple trees, and it looks like we got one up here. There may not be any apples under it, but it's a good fact to know is that apples give you hydration and food, so always make sure you check around apple trees. These may not actually be apple trees. This is one. Here we go. So as you can see, apples now spawn on the ground. You don't walk up to the tree and press F and like wait for it to randomly give you one. They actually spawn on the ground as if they've fallen off the tree, so apples are definitely a good source of nutrition, and they're pretty easy to find, um, especially in like apple orchards like that. Although, I sometimes seem to have better luck finding these random apple trees next to houses because I think they have some sort of balancing system set up to where you can't just run through an apple orchard and find, you know, 10 million apples, which I think makes sense, but I don't really know how you're supposed to deal with that. Again, look at that, check the hoodie, found a, some matches. And you guys might be saying, oh, you're just finding matches and knives inside of those hoodies and pants. Uh, but the thing is, those, those matches and knives, they easily could have been some ammo or some food, so it's just always worth noting. 
Um, again, you've got this sharp item, and the way you interact with items, as you can see, is you hold them, you don't drag it, like you have it here, you don't drag the steak knife to the item like you used to, that won't do anything. The way you mess with it is to have the knife in your hand like you would in real life and look at the item you want to cut and then you hold the left click and then you can quote unquote craft mask but really I believe we're just cutting this thing up. We'll see what happens. But either way that's how you interact with items. So look at that we cut it up and now we found ourselves another rag. Um, and if you had two stacks of six rags you can combine those together to craft an improvised rope which is pretty handy because if you find a burlap sack which you can often find in sheds like that over there those like three over there. Um, you can make an improvised backpack, which is a pretty good item in my opinion. It looks pretty camo um, and it stores a decent amount. And the hardest part about the improvised backpack is definitely the rope or the burlap sack because as long as you have a sharp item, again guys, the sharp item is very important. As long as you have a sharp item, you can walk up to a bush like this and as you can see, you can cut it up to get sticks. So here we go, we're going to left click like this and hold it down, cut up the bush and boom, there we go. You got yourself a long stick. Now this stick is not in the right form to make yourself a backpack, you've got to hold left click on it and cut this baby up and you'll get some smaller sticks. Boom, there you go. All right, so we're going to make our way into the city. And like I said, I'd like to go inland, but right now I don't feel comfortable with our amount of food, weaponry, um, and drink to run inland. So we got to use this city for, to our advantage, obviously, and get some loot from it. So guys, if you have hopes of making an improvised backpack, every time you see an item like this hoodie here, I would consider cutting it up because it's going to give you a few rags and then you're just a few rags closer. Um, look at that, it actually gave me four rags, so we are not far at all from being able to craft craft, craft an improvised rope. Um, also make sure you're always collecting drinks and if you're, if you're running out of storage in your backpack, don't be afraid to keep on eating stuff. Um, eventually you can overstuff yourself, but it takes a lot, a lot of food. Um, again, here's some rounds here, pretty good find. Um, that can be used in a lot of common guns. Uh, use 9mm. It's a pretty good ammo type. It's a little stronger than .380 rounds. Um, but today we're not delving into weapons. This is more how to start off. So as you can see, we've already spit off tips on starting off by finding rags, sharp items, making sure you're getting water. Now the water one is super important. I've been a little lucky, honestly, in this game, guys, and been finding quite a bit of Pepsis um, or drinks. But a lot of times you need to find yourself a water fountain. So another little find here is this BK-18. I mean, I'm going to take it. It's not that big a deal. Like, I'm, there's no tips involved in what I just did, except maybe make sure you're searching the whole house because a lot of people will skip this attic up here. And look at that. I just found myself a decent rifle. Um, it's actually single shot, so it takes a lot of uh, reloading, but it's pretty powerful. And look at that. We've actually found ourselves a splitting axe, which is a pretty dang good melee weapon, although I wouldn't discredit the steak knife or any sort of handheld knife. They're not bad either. Um, the axes, though, are pretty neat because they can do a big sweep and they can actually hit multiple zombies or people if you're into hitting people, too. Um, they can do that, too. All right, guys, so we're just going to keep on continuing our loot path here. We don't need to even... Oh, look at that. We got some more ammo. Pretty good. So that means for two different types of guns, we already have two types of ammo. Not even going to check, bother looking in this peacoat because there's no plus symbol. As you can see, nothing in there. Okay, I bothered looking in it just to, just to prove a point to you guys. Um, these sort of sheds here spawn more industrial style stuff. You got a pipe wrench in there. Um, there's another tire wrench in there, uh, etc, etc, um, but that is that. We got more zombies up ahead. In fact, I'm going to show you guys how to do a heavy attack. So if you pull out a weapon like this, and if you're holding shift as you run, when you do the attack, you're going to do a heavy attack. And boom, we did a heavy attack. So this is just a normal attack, right, th oh, right there. Oh wow, he's already dead. Well, as you can see, the, uh, the splitting axe does a decent amount of damage, so pretty good item. Um, and it's also good for cutting down trees because knives cannot cut down trees, but splitting axes can. Um, also here we got a box of cereal. Cereal though, a good tip for you guys is that it makes you quite thirsty. If I drink this cereal and you look at my, um, in the bottom left at hydration, I believe it will do an indicator. Well, it actually looks like it went, it went up, but that's, a, that is definitely a glitch because what really is happening. Yeah, there you go. So the hunger is going up and the thirst is going down. Um, cereal will actually make your character more thirsty than it was before. Same goes for like rice and uh, powdered milk. So make sure if you're going to eat cereal or powdered milk or anything like that, that you have a way of drinking some water because it's going to make you freaking thirsty. Oh, look at that. We found ourselves some rope. So we don't even actually have to worry about the improvised rope we were going to make. And I would say rope is a pretty good item to have. And guess what? I just found that on a zombie. So make sure you continue to listen to that tip. So also, guys, you want to keep making mental maps of things. So if you find a water fountain, you want to know where that is. If you find a military area, you want to know where that is. Here I'm about to deal with two... Oh, wow, I'm about to have to deal with three zombies. So you know what? We're actually going to choose not to deal with three zombies. And we're going to try to do a tactic of going inside a building to get away. And then seeing if we can sneak out the other side. Here we go. So we're going to open this up. Oh, shoot. Ain't working too well. Shut the door. 
Man, that got pretty loud there. But as you can see, I'm now limping just a little bit, so I'm a little bit slower. Um, it's just good to know that's a reason you do want to heal up, is because limping um, will slow you down, of course, in your travels. So now we got these zombies down here, and I have options. I can either try to run away again, um, or I can try to fight them one at a time. And I'm going to go with fighting them, because I really don't want to just run around the city trying to outrun zombies. Doesn't sound too entertaining to me. Let's just do it. Plus, we might get some good loot out of it, right? We're going to have these guys. They don't forget about you. This guy still wants me. Hopefully that zombie doesn't see me in a second, but she might. Looks like he's... Oh gosh, it saw me. Okay, so as you can see, quickly, a couple zombies can turn into quite a few. Alright, we got another one. Wow, we got lots of them on us. So you just want to focus, get around. Oh my gosh, so many zombies. So this is why you need a weapon, guys. If I didn't have this axe, I might be screwed right now. So, And there we go. Wow, look at that. And now we're at yellow health like that, um, which is not too great, but we have a little bit of food. And maybe one of these zombies has some food for us, and we can start to get healing. Luckily, it does not take a lot of food to heal yourself up, and this is good. This is a good time to point out when you're injured, and honestly, anytime you want to make sure you have food in your body because it doesn't take that long to heal. You just need to have the food to do it. So we're gonna check all the infected. I would hope one of these guys has some loot. Well, three rags. That's not horrible. Uh, anything here? Look at that can of spaghetti, and we have our knife to open it. Another good tip, guys, is to make sure you use. Actually, okay, so right there, if you have it in your hands, I want to point this out too, you can do a drag action, but only if it's in your hands. If it's over here, you're not able to drag to it and open it. It has to be in your hands. Um, so you can either do that, or, see I'm holding the spaghetti here. The knife is in my slot number three. If I hold three down, now I'm able to um, hold down left click and open the can of beans, or the can of spaghetti. So just another little tip there, um, but there's a few ways to do it. You can set the spaghetti on the ground, put your knife in your hand, open it that way. Lots of ways. So these zombies, though, they're actually going to provide me the nutrition it takes to heal up, funny enough. I killed them. Um, and look at that. We're already back to into the white of health. Um, we're not full health. As you can see, there's still some clear area there. But we're getting there. Um, and it's healing up not too bad because we have food in our body. We've had two or three sodas, and now we're eating ourselves a whole can of spaghetti. Not bad at all. Also in here, we can see two helmets. And I'm going to go ahead and take one of these helmets and put it on. While they may look you bit, make you look a little bit more bandity, um, and that's a risk you have to take, I guess, it's up to you, they are pretty protective, so they're sometimes worth carrying, especially if you already have a gun and stuff. Sometimes in the beginning stages, you may not want to wear them because, like, you may not want to look like a, you know, a jerk or something, which, as you can see, I kind of look like a, a mean character here. Oh, you know what? I think I'm, I'm actually bleeding, and I didn't even notice it. I was going to say my color seems to be getting pretty dark. So I'm actually bleeding from those hits from the zombies. You can see the icon in the bottom right. So I guess that accidentally was a good example to show you what happens if you don't stop your, ban um, stop your bleeding. So as you can see, now the blood is going up, and that means my blood is regenerating, and we should be good to go. But as you can see, you start to lose colors, and it actually impacts your healing as well. So it's definitely good to make sure you bandage up, because you can die from blood loss for sure. Found a potato. Go ahead and, going to go ahead and eat that, because like I said, we got to be healing up, boys. we got to be healing up. So because of the mental map I have, and I'm not saying that's impressive, I know that there is a military area right over here in the middle of Electro. And while this one's not that great, because again, we are on the coast and you want to get inland, it is definitely worth checking out still. So we're going to check it out and see if we can't find any ammo, maybe even get lucky with a gun, but most likely there'll be nothing, because everybody knows about it. And I would recommend you go for headshots, because headshots obviously can do more damage, um, and so it's worth, it's worth doing with melee weapons on zombies. Um, you know, you get a lucky headshot and uh, do some damage. So, uh, What do we got here? We got a teddy bear. It's got a note inside. Paper's not really worth taking. Let's go ahead and check this military tent here. If you ever see these, they're always worth checking. Um, they could have something good inside. So what do we got here? Um, ooh. So this here is some patrol pants, which while they're not that much different, they actually hold 10 more slots, and they're still only about 2 kilograms. So they're pretty light, and they give us 10 more slots. Although the jeans you spawn with, I just noticed, aren't that bad. They're only half a kilogram. So that's pretty good too. But I'm going to go ahead and take them because for one, or for one, they're pretty camo, and for two, the whole most slots. Ooh, and also a PSO 1 scope. That's a really good find down here. Um, you can actually hold left click when you're holding one of these to look through it. And that zombie may have just seen me. Not too sure, but they kind of work as a decent binocular. Um, and this scope is not a bad scope at all if you can find a gun that it fits on. And now this is a really good jacket. So this is a BDU jacket, and it holds 42 slots. That is more than double the amount that my hoodie holds. So if it's not too heavy, you probably want to be swapping up to these heavier um, or these bigger coats, especially when you haven't found a backpack. Because as you can see, I don't even have a backpack, but I'm already looking pretty camo. I have some ammo. I even have a gun. Um, and I can hold quite a bit of items. I can hold about 72, 72 items, is that right? Yeah. 
Another thing that's worth telling you guys, so I've got this um, gun in my hot slot here, number four, and I'm going to go ahead and throw this ammo here, my 26 shots of 380 rounds, also into my fifth hot slot. And if I hold, hold keypad number five, which is where the ammo is, as you can see, I'm now chambering the gun, and I can actually put one bullet in the gun, and I can actually shoot a bullet, and I can continue to reload this thing and shoot as I please. To aim a gun, you hold right click and then you hold middle mouse. It's a little bit wonky, um, but the system is there to prevent people from accidentally aiming and pointing too much. Another thing I wanted to point out is, as you can see, this cooking pot here. We're actually going to grab this and take it. It's pretty heavy, um, but we're going to take it. You can actually fill it with water. So there's water bottles, canteens, and cooking pots, and maybe something else um, that can all hold water. And that is very, very, very handy to plan on taking with you if you're going on a journey because you don't, aren't always going to have access to water. This here is a police station, and you definitely want to try to loot these guys. Again, I keep repeating this, but we're in we're in a city on the coast, so a lot of times the loot isn't going to be as good. In fact, I bet that as we loot this thing, we're not going to find really any good loot. Um, but if you were up in a city like Staroy or something, um, it might be it might be a good bit better because you're more inland, and then even farther you go up, and you're going to be finding better and better stuff. So here's a weapon cleaning kit or a gun cleaning kit. These are really good because as you use a gun, you can see they get to these conditions of badly damaged. Um, and you can take one of these guys and combine it, and that will clean the gun. Um, found some canned sardines, so we're getting some backup food on us. Pretty good here. Um, and like I said, we didn't actually find very good loot in this uh, in this here police station, but that's all right. Um, kind of proves the point that inland loot is not that good. Now, you want to make sure you're keeping track of where inland is and where you need to be going. Oh, crap. Let's try to, you know, I'm going to scoot back at these guys, and we're going to lock the door. That's another good tactic. You got zombies on you. They're inside the building. Run out. Shut the door. You're good to go. And we're going to try to get away from this guy, too. So right now, guys, I feel I've eaten enough food. Now, okay, there we go. So I've eaten enough food, and I'm about to have two backup food items, food and drink, that I feel comfortable enough to run inland. Um, often, I would recommend you have maybe at least one to two waters, water type of items um, and maybe one to two food items before you go on a journey. But that's on top of already have eaten a lot of food. So if you're hungry and thirsty, I'm not saying you can go on your journey if you have two food items. I'm saying you need to be already you need to have already eaten and drank some stuff. Wow, oh, that grammar was bad. Um, to be able to move on, which I have. And now I've got that soda, which I just drank again, and I've got this can of sardines, which does provide a little bit of water. Um, but yeah. So I'm gonna try to get inside here. What do we got here? Ooh, some boxed ammo, which we can actually use in our uh, in our scorpion here, which is not not too bad, not too shabby at all. So another thing worth commenting on is you'll see these apartment buildings right here. This here is an apartment building. There's a couple there and there's a couple more over there. Um, you'll see them in some cities. They don't have very good loot in them. You can find some stuff, but it's really not good at all. Um, tents, if you're looking for tents, maybe go in there, but that's a topic for another video. Uh, but yeah, don't waste your time checking all the rooms in those. Houses have much better loot, so just loot your houses. And once you have enough stuff to get inland, I recommend going inland. I don't think you should check every house in Electro or Berezino or Cherno. I mean, feel free to, like, you'll be fine. But I think you're going to find much better loot if you can get yourself inland. Okay, guys, so again, I commented on this building at the beginning of the video, and we can see it's another police-style building. So these buildings spawn police loot just like police stations do. And you can honestly find some pretty good stuff in here. Um, like, I found my gun. Ooh, and a really cool-looking gas mask. Look at that. Hold on, let's see if we can put this thing on just to show you guys. That looks pretty dang cool, although I'm not going to wear it because that white color really, really makes you stand out. Um, look at that. There's a box of 12-gauge ga 12 ammo for a shotgun, which is pretty nice, along with some handcuffs. We're going to leave those alone, though. Uh, anything else good in here? Doesn't look to be so. Um, that's all right. Pretty, pretty decent. Found some ammo. I'm happy with that. And the last thing I wanted to comment on in this little city here is that over here, you're going to find these style buildings. And these style buildings you will find all across the map as well. And they also spawn, they're really small, but they also spawn police loot. Ooh, okay, now's a good time. I was, I was looking for a time to throw this tip in. So, when you find zombies as well, um, we talked about how to fight them. But another thing is, you honestly, most times, if you, know, if you don't know if they're going to go after you, you can sneak past them. Um, so if you're crouched here and you're just walking, they won't see you as easily as if you were standing up. And heck, they'll even see you less easily if you're laying down like this. Like, they, they really have bad vision. Um, but if I were to just be standing up and sprinting, this guy would actually see me. So as you can see, he does not see me, even though I'm really close. But if I were to stand up and start sprinting around, he's going to notice me. As you can see, look at that. He's already looked over at me, and now he's going to come at me. So I'm going to be ready for this. I'm going to pull out my weapon. And if you hold S, you can actually do a blocking maneuver. S and right click. As you can see this, we're blocking his attacks. At least most of them. If you get a few of them on you, it's not so easy. Um, but it gives you some time to kind of get ready to, to do your own attack. And there we go. Two hits. How many hits are going to take, buddy? 
And three hits, and he's down. Easy as that. All righty. So I'm going to go ahead and check with these buildings. I bet in one of the two or three that are here, we will find something decent. I also wouldn't recommend going and looting the church. Not very good loot up there. Um, and I know you guys are probably thinking, Jake, you're talking about a very specific building here. Uh, or like a specific city. But you'll see churches in a lot of cities, and they don't have that good of stuff. Unless they're just right next to you. Like, just don't make the trek up the hill. And a lot of people spawn in Electro. So here we found 10 7.62 ammo, which is personally my favorite ammo in the game. Maybe 5.56, I don't know. Um, but the, this ammo actually goes to this rifle here, which you'll find a lot of times on the coast. The coast doesn't have good weapons, but this is a very common one to find. So make sure you look for some 7.62 ammo, because as you can see, boom, we're already chambering our rifle. And this gun packs a punch. Um, you can sometimes one-shot people with it, uh, but it is only chamberable. There is no magazine for it, no clip for it. You can only chamber it, so that's just worth noting. All right, we're going to check this other building here, but we've already found some ammo in the other one, so you've already pretty much been de demonstrated that these buildings can be pretty good, but figure I'll show you anyways. Um, I'm guessing somebody found a police item because they swapped out a hoodie there, but anyways. So right now you have the choice. You could run along the coast and go down to Cherno, or you can run inland and head up towards Staroy, um, Novi Sober, Starry Sober, and get yourself, get your butt inland. And the Northwest Airfield is one of the biggest, or is the biggest airfield in the game, and it is also inland um, over that direction. So... Make sure yourself you get yourself in, and that's one of the biggest tips I'll give you today is to do that. Um, and again, taking the initiative with zombies is really important. I have a video talking about how to fight zombies a bit more in depth, um, and it's definitely pretty helpful because these guys can get to be annoying. And once you get decent at the game, though, they're honestly not that bad. Um, but for a beginner, sometimes you know they can be a bit wonky. And Daisy's zombies, you know, Daisy's famous for being a little bit glitchy. Um, so, and that does not exclude zombies, of course. So you gotta be watching out. So right here, guys, I can hear there's lots of zombies around. I'm going to be sneaking around because I really don't want them to have any come on me. I've been bleeding a decent amount, and I've been looking for a water fountain, and here it is. And you want to make sure you make a mental map of this dang water fountain because when you're an Electro, there's not many here. And you want to just know that, hey, there's a water fountain here, and I need to know where it's at because oftentimes you won't be finding drink. There will be a lot of people on the server, and you need to drink up. So you can hold a lot of water in your body. I would recommend doing at least like 10 sips, if not like 20 even. Um, I mean, you can watch for your character to start feeling full. Uh, but really, guys, it is important that you're drinking water for sure. So I'm going to get a few drinks here. I've been drinking some sodi pops that I got lucky and found. Um, but one of the other really important things I wanted to point out is with the uh, the pot I have in my backpack. And I'll show you what you can do with that right now. So get this guy out. And as you can see, it says fill. So with this pot here, I can actually hold fill and fill this guy up. And then later on, I will have a cooking pot full of water to drink along my journey. And that's really, really, really nice because you can go on long journeys through the woods and have a big storage of water in your backpack. Now this thing is gonna weigh a lot more now. In fact, it weighs, actually, you know what? It doesn't actually weigh that much. Um, I would think it would weigh a lot more, so never mind. Um, definitely have a pot like that in your backpack uh, or a water bottle at least, but one of these guys is really important to have with you at all times. Well, guys, thank you for watching this little guide on how to start off in Daisy Stanlone. Make sure to drop a comment if you learned anything or if you have any tips that you want to give to other players. I'm sure there's many things I missed, but I'm hoping this is just enough to keep you guys alive and get you going in the world. More guides to come in the future. Um, make sure you subscribe if you're not already for more Daisy content. And just drop a like with your thoughts on the video. I read every single comment, so drop a like, engage. And there's a good chance I'll, you know, like it back or maybe even leave a comment reply to you. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.